Hello and welcome to the Cinematic Attic YouTube channel. How are you? Let's take a look at everything I picked up since the last video. So the other day, it was Christmas. Well, it was like Christmas because I came home and found four packages waiting for me, including uh, my Severin Sale package and my Vinegar Syndrome Partners Only Month package. Uh, but let's take a look. So I ordered ma basically from Severin um, previous releases that I didn't have. Starting with Strike Commando 2. Um, I bought the first one a while back. Knew I'd eventually get the second one. There it is. Then I bought a bunch of titles to upgrade uh, VHS. So any, anything Severn had in their catalog that I needed to upgrade VHS, I picked up. Starting with Next of Kin. And that will upgrade this VHS. Patrick. Which will upgrade this VHS. Dead Kids, which actually upgrades to VHS because I have it under that title, as well as its US release title, Strange Behavior. And now the screaming starts, which will upgrade this VHS. The Beast Must Die, which will upgrade this VHS. Another Beast, The Beast in the Cellar, which will upgrade a VHS that I'm actually keeping, at least for now. and Ashanti, which uh, will also upgrade a VHS that I'm keeping for collector's reasons. Also from the uh, Severin sale, I got some of their InterVision DVDs for shot on video type stuff. Got the Burning Moon. I did flip this cover because cover it came with it looked kind of like that made my head hurt <laughs> so burning moon dream stalker death by love double feature and suffer little children from the vinegar syndrome partners only month Got some more Saturn's Core titles. This is one that was supposed to come in my previous sale order but was missed, so they sent it with this order. That is Shatter Dead. Another Wave production release Psycho Sisters. And the double feature Red Spirit Lake. And we await. From the Agfa partner label. This is one I've been curious about for a while. I've, I heard about this film a long time ago, uh, directed by a, a teenager, Emily Higgins. Pathogen. Also comes with the uh, documentary Zombie Girl. From the Fun City Edition partner label, Radio On. Couldn't resist the old retro cassette tape style packaging. <laughs> and finally from that uh, Partners Only Month, from Culture Shock, 
Flashdance, and Hollywood's New Blood double feature disc. <clears throat> so a few episodes back I mentioned that um, I was trying to get these two uh, local low-budget zombie films uh, they were filmed uh, in the area I got the first one Deadlands um, I forget the subtitle but I was looking for Deadlands 2 trapped uh, eBay had a new copy for um, $180 <laughs> and a used copy for about a hundred less um, I did not want to pay $80 um, so on a whim the other day I typed in the title of the film on a Google shirt Google, Google search and hit the uh, shopping option um, and for ten dollars a copy appeared being sold through uh, Mercari which is a site I haven't used uh, basically because I, um, I I resist using <laughs> certain sites uh, because I think that if I start using them, I'll go nuts, which is why I resisted eBay for a long time until I started using it years ago. But, you know, uh, I don't know why I try to resist. But $10 got Deadlands 2 trapped. Again, I wanted this because uh, it was filmed at a local theater, like 10 minutes away, a theater that I go to. Um, you can see part of the old theater sign. You can see the theater itself right there. So it's fun to see the theater as it looked um, over 10 years ago. Next is a film that I've been uh, wanting to get for years, but I could not remember the title. <laughs> I'd heard about it a long time ago. always wanted to check it out, but the title just went out of my head and I just never took the time to try to research it and figure it out I figured I'd stumble across it eventually and I did um, Ghost Watch the BBC TV film mockumentary mockumentary ghost um, investigation which much like the old War of the Worlds radio broadcast um, which people thought was real and panicked um, many people thought this was real when they watched it and uh, I watched it recently or when I got it I should say and um, thought it was great so happy to finally <laughs> not only figure out what this was but to buy it and see it um, and I think I heard that it's coming out on blu-ray soon oh well <laughs> got it DVD, Ghost Watch. Uh, because I'm a completist, Morbius um, wasn't that great on the film. I know a lot of people weren't. Um, but since it's MCU adjacent, you know, officially uh, multiverse adjacent, I had to get it. And also, one of my favorite watches this year, I had to pick up a copy of Nobody. If you like action movies and you haven't seen this, check this out. It's excellent. Um, I won't get into it here, but one thing I really enjoyed was the fact that the uh, hero was not invincible like so many movie heroes are in action movies. Um, so anyway, Nobody, check that out. And uh, finally, for... Um, the titles I'm going to spotlight. <laughs> Once I uh, started shopping on Mercari, I found another seller who had something I wanted. A, um, a lot of 14 Warner Archive discs, DVDs, for a very nice price, which um, allowed me to get each disc for under $5. And I only had one of them, but not even as a Warner Archive. I had this one Crossfire as part of one of the uh, Warner Brothers Film Noir box sets. Um, so I already had the film, but uh, not the archive edition, so fine, whatever. 
A few of them were, uh, actually three of them were VHS upgrades. Life and Times of Judge Roy Bean. We'll upgrade this VHS. Nasty Habits. Upgrade this VHS. Summer of 42. We'll upgrade this VHS. We got Hell on Frisco Bay. A uh, TNT TV movie western, Riders of the Purple Sage. The 1925 version of The Unholy Three, Lon Chaney. Got a triple feature of Kirby Grant and Chinook, Yukon Manhunt, Northwest Territory, and Yukon Gold. And some of these were even sealed, which was awesome. Uh, like the Chapman Report, it was sealed. The girl he left behind. I'll see you in my dreams. And that's a promise. One with the old trade dress. Any Wednesday. Bombardier. And you had to say it that way. And finally, tall story. So, here's everything else I picked up. Some 50 cent DVDs from an antique mall. And they will upgrade these VHS. Went back to the antique mall. Got a few more 50 cent DVDs. Then I also picked up one of the uh, Milk Creek 50 packs from ages ago that I never, never picked up. Um, and those will actually allow me to get rid of these VHS. Picked up a few movies at Dollar Tree. And this one... We'll upgrade this VHS. Coworker getting rid of some VHS um, gave these to me for free. For deletion, Dollar Tree never letting me down. Found some more stuff, and I found that uh, a couple stores I've been to now have devoted part of an entire aisle to DVDs and Blu-rays which I like. And I found a lot of recent um, major Hollywood fare, like these on DVD. These all being uh, universal titles. And then this one, Warner Brothers on uh, Blu-ray. So for this episode's look at two titles that belong to the cinematic attic pantheon of favorite films I've selected. First of all, from 1976, Kidnapped Co-Ed. And don't let the title fool you. This is not just some simple um, exploitation film. It was given kind of an exploitation title. Um, but it's uh, a little bit more than that. So ex uh, Kidnapped Co-Ed does deal with um, a man who kidnaps a girl uh 
who has rich parents, I believe, because uh, he wants money. And um, he drags her through a series of interesting and odd uh, events and characters. Uh, and eventually uh, they form sort of a odd relationship, which, you know, ba very basic plot, right? But the thing is, this film is dressed up with so many little touches that that um, make it uh, rise above other films that might be like it. Um, it says on the back here that um, this director, Frederick Friedel, uh, has been compared to uh, David Lynch and Terrence Malick. I can see that in certain aspects, but I think that really just speaks to the quality, um, the uh, creativity. Um, there are moments in here where uh, other directors wouldn't even think of just adding a little touch, um, but not only that, you have uh, directions um, where the director takes things that are just clever, things that he didn't have to do, things that, you know, this film could have just been a pretty run-of-the-mill straightforward thing, but he throws in little um, uh, twists, little things that um, catch you off guard, and certainly a whole lot of weirdness. <laughs> um, but I first, when I first saw this film, uh, I bought this double feature, and I watched the first movie, Axe, which I like a lot. That's a great movie. And then I watched Kidnap Coed, and it really struck me. It was really something. Um, above and beyond what I expected. You could tell that if this director had been able to keep making films, he, he made these two films in the 1970s, and that's all he was able to make in that time. Um, if he would have been able to keep making films, especially in this era, he would have, I think, uh, been able to make some real great classics that we'll just never see. Um, he, he, you could tell um, as he made these two films, his ability, his skill, his uh, imagination was growing. And um, I, I'm really happy now, especially after you know liking and, and, and uh, appreciating these films, that he's getting some more respect. But Kidnapped Coed was the one that really, really just struck me. Uh, it's really, um, you know, don't let the title fool you. It's really um, a film that there's so much in the film that just elevates it above that kind of a generic title. So um, I would highly recommend uh, Kidnapped Coed. Axe is great too, so if you get this double feature, can't lose. Now, um, an interesting thing is, since both of these films share um, the same actor, there is, <laughs> I don't know, um, I guess you'd call it an interesting experiment, where um, the two films were edited together to try to make one story out of both of them and that film is also on here it's called Bloody Brothers um, so <laughs> I remember checking that out and that was uh, really kinda neat how they um, uh, were able to make both films um, seem to be set in the same same space and, and, and relate to each other so anyway, Kidnapped Coed, great movie. Next, this Kino Lorber release of Certain Fury, 1985. I used to have this movie on VHS, sitting in my collection for who knows how long. When this uh, Blu-ray came out, I heard it recommended on um, a podcast. So I watched my VHS, and it, I, I loved it. It was a great movie. So when this came out from Kino Lorber, well, I eventually had to get this release from Kino Lorber. Um, this film is about two two women, played by Tatum O'Neill and Irene Cara, who uh, essentially are just on the run for a crime that they did not commit. So basically through the whole film they're being pursued. Tatum O'Neill plays a uh, you know rough uh, kind of street kid. Irene Cara is not. <laughs> um, so the two of them together, you have the um, that contrast. 
and of course through the movie it's um, one of those movies where they can't stand each other and then eventually they um, get along but they uh, just proceed through a series of um, events meeting uh, meeting and experiencing a bunch of characters including Peter Fonda and Moses Gunn that uh, just create all these interesting situations for them so um, I loved it it is one of those films that I uh, consider part of my <laughs> uh, Warriors cinematic universe you know the 1979 Warriors I mentioned this before films that could exist in that same universe the very easily um, could be like one city over or maybe even the same city uh, the Savage Streets takes place in it's um, uh, in a similar vein you have that grimy uh, 80s kind of feeling um, so definitely could fit in that universe but uh, Certain Fury 1985 directed by Stephen Gyllenhaal highly recommend this if you've uh, if you like that kind of thing um, and I do so Certain Fury check it out so that'll do it for this episode. So until next time, everyone, enjoy your movies.